This 70 years old American fastest bomber was so unreliable and problematic that sometimes pieces of it would just fall off, but why the B-52 is expected to outlive much newer B-1 and stealthier B-2 bombers is. Otherwise known as the AGM-183 hypersonic missile, which on May 14, 2022, the missile finally conducted its first successful test. During the B-52 early years, the B-52 was like today's F-35, but probably worse, but today the B-52 is more of a fella, thanks to persistence of the US Air Force to make this airplane nearly perfect. During the 1950s and 60s, B-52 bombers were the principal instrument of the United States Air Force to obliterate the Soviet Union with nuclear bombs if needed. The originally installed J-57 engines proved unreliable, which caused the first fatal crash in 1956. In the 1960s, it was discovered that when B-52s flew at low altitude, structural fatigue was accelerated by a factor of eight. By the time most of the technical issues related to the B-52 fleet were resolved, the advances in Soviet Union's air defenses especially surface-to-air missiles, had made the B-21 obsolete. They could no longer fly directly into Soviet Union's territory and drop gravity nuclear bombs. So the Pentagon instead poured money into intercontinental ballistic missiles and cruise missiles with nuclear warheads such as AGM-86, which could be launched far away from Soviet airspace. The second lucky development for the B-52 was the Vietnam War, during which they were converted into giant flying dump trucks, railing conventional bombs on enemy positions. The internal weapons bay allows for better fuel efficiency, because a full loads of bomb under the wings will increase fuel consumption by 30%. The B-52 is capable of carrying up to 70,000 pounds of weapons, and has a typical range of 8,800 miles, without the need of aerial refueling. By 1956, B-52 were dropping 8,000 tons of bombs in South Vietnam every month. It was in Vietnam, where B-52 earned a reputation of being a dreaded bearer of death and destruction. In fact, one of the reasons for keeping B-52 around was using them in low-intensity conflicts, where the enemy doesn't possess modern air defenses. War games suggested that B-52 equipped with nuclear cruise missiles would be a credible threat to the Soviets until 1985, but there was a problem. In the early 80s, it was estimated that if the B-52 fleet were to launch a cruise missile, only 75% of them would survive the Soviet defenses, and that survivability percentage kept decreasing as the Soviet technological advancements continued. So President Reagan resurrected the B-1 program as a long-range combat aircraft project. In essence, the B-1 Lancer became a stop-gap bomber between the vulnerable B-52s and the future B-2 stealth bombers. By the time the last B-1 rolled out of production, the US Air Force concluded that the B-1s were as vulnerable to the Soviet air defenses as the B-52s. And yet another lucky development happened that kept the B-52 alive. As a result of the collapse of the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War, the Pentagon reduced the number of procured stealth B-2 bombers from 132 to just 21. While ICBMs and SLBMs are primary systems for delivering nuclear weapons, the B-52 is still retained for nuclear missions, because it can be quickly launched in a crisis, and quickly called back mid-flight, if officials conclude that a presumed nuclear threat has been falsely identified. Roughly 40 B-52 bombers are currently assigned a deterrence role as part of the nuclear triad. Seventy years later, the B-52 are still kicking around, even after a rocky start they still prove to be reliable.